All right, guys, welcome back. I hope you're ready because we're about to head out on a little adventure. We're gonna be taking out the two Jeeps, my parents and I, uh, to do one final camp together and also to test out how the white Jeep is running. I just got out of the garage, so uh, having an extra person there just in case anything goes wrong or there's any issues with it still that uh, is just an extra safety bonus. But on top of that, uh, my parents are gonna be heading out filming their uh, empty nest edition series again. So I, this is one of the last times I'll be seeing them for a little bit, at, at least until Peter comes back from Africa. So yeah, we're going to be heading out and going exploring in the woods. It's going to be pretty fun. Not sure how well you can hear me, but uh, this whole trip will be kind of interesting to see how the whole thing works out because uh, this isn't my first time, actually, yeah, this is my first time camping in the Jeep by myself. Obviously, I'm not completely by myself because I'm gonna have my parents with me and camp uh, in their separate Jeep, but this will be the first time that I'm, you know, uh, sleeping alone. I'm, I'm usually with my brother, Pete, even on uh, most of our, you know, out of country expeditions with or without our family. We're always together, so. Now that he's in Africa filming his own thing with the Exhibiti with the Expedition Overland team, uh, I guess I'm going to be running solo for a while, which is pretty interesting and uh, I'm actually quite excited for it. And I hope you guys are too, because hopefully I'll be able to bring to you my own kind of perspective and way of doing things. Well, that's not a very good start uh, to the shakedown trip. This whole trip is kind of to see uh, if we have everything packed and we're ready to go on an expedition further afield. And uh, we already made a wrong turn. So not the best start, but we're on the proper road now. And since it turned to gravel, Lando's starting to get pretty excited because he knows he's gonna be able to go for a run soon. Come on, Lando, go. So my parents are doing a shakedown of the white Jeep, which I mentioned just got out of the garage. Um, and I'm gonna be doing a shakedown of the blue Jeep. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the blue Jeep. It's been running like a dream, which is amazing for being a 2012 and having almost 300,000 miles on it. But uh, I'm just gonna be making sure that everything inside internally, all the electronics are running properly. The first thing that kind of went down is the radio, but I know exactly what's wrong with it. It's got wiring going underneath the seat, the built-in radio with the Jeep, and uh, it must have rattled loose so it's not turning on. So, gonna have to go handhelds between the two Jeeps, which is no problem at all for now. But as uh, soon as I can, I need to get under the seat and fix that. Now this whole trip is basically a test run for a lot of things, for the Jeep, for some of the equipment, my packing style, but also my filming style. So usually I use a A7R4 for my camera because uh, uh, it's a camera we already have for photography and then I've just kind of modified it to be used for filming as well. And then uh, what I'm testing on this trip is using GoPro. So I. I haven't used much GoPro in the past in our first couple years with our uh, family YouTube channel, the Epic Family Road Trip. We use GoPros quite a bit and um, I wanted to try it again just for the ease of filming and kind of like the 360 view. I feel like uh, I enjoy GoPro filmed videos quite a bit. I'm still going to try to film with the A7 mostly just uh, for the high quality aspect of it but I want to know what you guys thoughts are on me using GoPro because I, I just find it a lot easier to do more of this point and shoot um, kind of film style if I can do a mix of both that way I can still get all the cinematic b-roll and beautiful stuff uh, everyone seems to love and then also be able to capture moments in real time 
uh, like I am right now. So let me know what you guys think and I'll see if this is something I add to the arsenal or if I just stick with the A7 and do more tripod filming. Yeah, so this video is a test run for that. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, pulled over for another traveler and a truck. Seems like my parents are getting some pretty good camping information. Yeah, I think we're getting a nice scoop, which is always nice to get uh, some local information because the locals always know all the best spots. So that nice gentleman we were stopped talking to uh, a little while back mentioned that at kilometer seven, because uh, there's little kilometer markers along this road, uh, there is a lake that he enjoys fishing at. So we'll probably stop off at that. I think we just passed by kilometer three and uh, Lando's been sprinting full speed that whole time. So I'm gonna let him in now and uh, let him have a little break. And before you know it, he'll be wanting to go out again. Good boy. Getting muddy. Well, that's one thing to check off the list is uh, the suspension works. Limerizers work, although I probably should add my window up. Wow, it is getting muddy. sleeping with me tonight. I think he has his own spot. <laughs> Better. <laughs> Watch your white shirt. Here, I think he's happy to be back out on the trail. Nice uh, choice of shoes you got there, Dan. These are the Expedition 3000s. <laughs> Perfect for uh, running cameras through muddy puddles. Mosquitoes, black flies. Oh wow, that'd be a pretty camping so spot. Oh, that is perfect. I wonder if there's any good fishing. Did we bring the raft? The guy says really yeah. good fishing. We have the raft, everything. But uh, go to where I took pictures on the way back. So that, that'll be easy. So, made the rookie mistakes of all mistakes since it's been a while since uh, I've done an off-road trail and I forgot to take it out of too high and put it into four low. But luckily I didn't get myself stuck before I was able to switch. And then uh, as soon as I switched, obviously the Jeep crawled through like it was nothing. But uh, man, this is quite the tight trail and uh, humid but uh, I'm having a lot of fun I've been looking forward to this for a long time that's one thing this Jeep could use AC it's 
pretty humid day and uh, I have to have all the windows up because of the bugs, but that's why I look forward to camping in the fall so much. Always my favorite sweater weather and uh, all the bugs return to hell. So you can just sleep outside under the stars and not have to worry about a thing. We got a pretty um, deep looking silt puddle again. And uh, I don't think we would be able to make it through that without winching. Does it look like there's a way around up ahead or are we gonna have to try and go through that thing? I'm uh, taking this little, there's a tiny side trail around. Uh, it's made for four wheel drive, uh, like quads. So it's pretty narrow, but I'll try it. And uh, otherwise we're gonna have to go through, but that work plan is right now is very boggy. This is tight. This is meant for side-by-sides, not Jeeps. Definitely not our size of Jeep. Okay. Right now, both of my mirrors are like an inch away from branches. <laughs> Pull in your mirror. You're gonna have to turn your wheels the other way and go back a little bit. Yep. Just back a wee bit. Okay. And then just bump it. Not too sharp, not too sharp. Okay, now this way. Beauty. Once you know you're clear behind you. It's funny, like I was mentioning earlier, exploring your own areas. Out of everywhere I've been, uh, Alaska was the closest thing to this, of being on narrow trails, but this definitely passed it. Like, I was doing like a six point turn there just to make it in between these two trees. I had to fold this here because it was actually touching. And then just barely like bopping in between these two sides. It's pretty amazing that this sort of off-road trail, this intensity of trail is right in our backyard and we never would have known if we didn't listen to one of uh, our neighbors, one of the locals in the area and get his information that this was here. Otherwise we would have just seen an offshoot on the road we've taken many, many times and never driven down it. So, but right up ahead, uh, the white Jeep is scraping an alu box on a tree. We're trying to see if we can make it through without cutting, but it doesn't look like it. Next up to just to have Yeah. Right, so we squeezed our way through the forest there and made it to the lake that that guy told us about and it was definitely worth it. We're gonna get camp set up and then I'll show you a bit of the lake and hopefully cast a line before the sun goes down. Wait. It looks good there.
I'm just praying that this isn't poison ivy. I don't think it is, but if it is, uh, oh no. All right, guys, so right now I'm hiding inside of the Jeep from the mosquitoes. Um, they got really bad now that the sun started to go down. We had planned on getting into camp a lot earlier, um, but then we had that amazing fun trail that we headed on and uh, that slowed us down quite a bit just from the narrow passes and muddy uh, mud puddles. But uh, that was a welcome uh, delay because that was so much fun. I mean, I was not expecting to have a, a trail like that to go run uh, so close to home. So I'm really happy that happened. And uh, although I'm not really going to be able to walk around and explore for a couple reasons, mosquitoes, two, I'm tired, and three, my footwear is not uh, really well adapted to the wilderness. Wasn't the smartest idea on my part, but I uh, tend to be the person that always picks comfort over function when it comes to clothing. Anyways, um, although tonight might not be the most comfortable camp, might not be able to have a fire or go fishing, I wouldn't trade that for uh, a camp where everything went perfectly well because it's kind of the nature of exploration and adventure that in order to do so, you usually are going to have to put yourself in uncomfortable positions. Obviously, this is something we're not uh, we're not not used to. We've been traveling for seven years now, but um, yeah, I almost enjoy days like this, uh, whether like hiding inside of the jeep, whether it's from bugs or from freezing cold temperatures, the most because uh, I usually end up remembering those trips the most. But uh, I got my bed basically set up, just got everything cleared out of the way, and then uh, I'll, I'll make the rest of my bed in a little bit. I think I'm gonna review some of the footage I filmed today and see what I think of the GoPro, which is what I'm filming on right now. And uh, hopefully it all turned out okay. I, I think it did. I, I liked the look. I went on the little playback thing and saw um, a bit of the footage, and I, I think it looked good just on the little GoPro screen. So I'm pretty excited to see how it turns out. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, definitely let me know what you think. This is such a beautiful spot. You definitely could come in here. This would be a great spot in the fall to like bring a canoe and go explore because on the uh, Gaia GPS, you can see that it, the lake kind of curves that way. This is just one of the little inlets and goes on for a very long time. So it's a pretty big lake actually. And uh, I've seen lots of fish jump, so it's probably good fishing as well. Well, I mean, that's what that guy told us is that it was good fishing. So this will definitely be a place that I come back to and uh, I'm going to explore a little bit more in the morning. But for tonight, it's just gonna be basically uh, going to bed. I know my parents are gonna be making a delicious meal. This here is the only thing keeping me alive right now, the thermosel. For those of you who do not know what this is, by the way, this isn't sponsored. Um, it's just a, Mosquito burner. It's got a little butane thing here that is interchangeable when it runs out and then this little blue pad that uh, kind of slowly burns. You don't need to leave this on for long, especially not in a, a tiny place like this or in a tent even when I'm camping. I carried this my last camp. You just turn it on for a little bit. All the mosquitoes in the area either leave or die if they're trapped in with you and then uh, you shut it off and you're pretty much good which is like, I've tried so many things up here in Canada. We have a mosquito problem for, you know, about two months out of the year, but um, tried everything over the years. And this is the only thing that works or the thing that works the best. I know this might seem a little bit uh, messy, but that's what this trip's for is just kind of feeling everything out and um, setting up some systems, getting some systems in place. It's actually my first time sleeping in the JXL, like in the bottom half. I've always slept up in the top tent, but uh, tonight I think I'm gonna try it down here. There we go. This is nice. It's pretty rare that I can uh, stretch out to my heart's content in camping rigs. But these JXLs with 
really give that extra space that's needed. Uh, for those of you that don't know, all of our family is pretty tall. Uh, my dad's about 6'4", and he can fit down here. And uh, me and my brother are about 6'1", 6'2". So I don't even have the seat pushed forward. I could get even extra space by pushing the passenger seat forward and leaning it forward. But even without that done, I have a lot of room back here. So I think this is going to be comfortable. Lando's bed. Still sleep in this little corner behind the back seat next to me. And he's also got his own sleeping bag. Especially now that he's muddy, he is definitely not sleeping with me. There's my sleeping bag. It's the thinnest one I have right now because it is hot. Camp is set up now. My parents have their little bug room set up. Uh, and I think they're cooking sausages, so I might go check that out. And then I'm gonna crawl back in here and hit the hay. Well, I'm going to um, head to bed. Pretty uh, tired. I was uh. It wasn't a long drive, but it was a pretty intense drive, and this bed is so comfortable, so I will see you guys in the morning, and uh, we'll see what the day has in store. Well, good morning everyone. Slept in quite a bit, so I'm going to hop out and go explore camp while I still have time. And judging by the heat in here, seems like a pretty sunny, warm day, so excited for that. Let's go check it out. All right guys, so didn't have much luck, but uh, I didn't really go at it for too long because we have to head out soon because we got some appointments in town and stuff. So yeah, this is a, an amazing lake, incredibly rocky lake. Looks like a beautiful place to camp. So uh, I think I'll definitely have an excuse to come back and try fishing again because this camping spot just looks phenomenal. Like everywhere around uh, the little islands on the lake and stuff is all big rocky cliffs with big rocky sections, which is perfect for setting up a, a tent or a hammock. So I'll definitely be back, but I'm going to paddle in, uh, put this away, and then we'll finish setting up camp and head out. What a beautiful spot. Headed out. Had a beautiful night in camp. Slept in, and then uh, even had a bit of time to go paddling around. So that was fun. It's gonna be a little bit tight getting out of here, but at least you get to go on that fun trail again. That's one great thing about pushing through places like this is once you've done it. The adventure is only half over, you still have to make it out, which uh, is a pretty amazing feeling.
both mirrors are closed and then still inches, even centimeters at times in between two trees. Well, I'm not sure if you can see the mud on the window, but that was a pretty intense little run there. Made it through all right, so we're gonna keep uh, heading on our way, but whew, what a fun trail. Well, we just turned back onto the gravel uh, logging road which concludes that little journey into the bush. That was amazing. That was definitely worth the time. It's hard to believe, like I was mentioning earlier, that you can just turn off of a road you've been on, you know, many times and there's adventures like that out there. Just always goes to show, you never know what's outside of your own backyard unless you go and explore it. Back on pavement. Feels nice and smooth. I actually forgot to put one of my mirrors back out, so I'll have to pull over and do that, but. Ah, that was a fun trail. I had a lot of fun. Feels good to be back on the road, and uh, it just got me really excited to get some travels in. Don't know where yet, but uh, I know I'm gonna be going somewhere, even if it's just in uh, my own province. I'm gonna be exploring as much as I can. Well, guys. The journey is not over yet. I just had a craving for a burger. And remember it, hey, we're not that far away from town, so I could easily go get myself a burger. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go head into town, get a burger, sit by the water, and uh, end this day in style. Uh, the town up here is, uh, we've been to it quite a few times and it's not too, too far away. It's just like an hour and a half or so, so. And it's a beautiful spot. Uh, tons of boats are coming in all the time from the States even. And it's just a small little town, really small population, so. I'm looking forward, I can already taste that thing. <sighs> what a day, what a trip. Turned out way better than I thought, just kind of really happy right now. That's probably why I keep repeating myself on that. All right, let's go get some food. All right, guys, uh, that was a delicious dinner. I'm gonna head back to the cabin now and meet up with uh, my parents and just have a cozy uh, last few days with them. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, it was a lot of fun to film, so I, I really hope you guys enjoy that sort of content because I'd like to do more of it uh, in the future. But um, as always, a big thank you to those of you who have subscribed to my Patreon channel and 
are helping support this journey. Wouldn't be possible without you guys, so I really appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.